And I will present you my research, mainly during my PhD studies, which was on the vehicle bridge interaction phenomenon with focus on uh, railway bridges. So Ellen already introduced me, but I will give like a brief introduction of myself for people that don't know me. I am from Greece. I received a diploma in civil engineering from the National Technical University of Athens. Then I proceeded to PhD studies at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, where I uh, completed my PhD under the supervision of associate professor, Dr. Elias Dimitrakopoulos. And now we'll be working at ETH Zurich as part of the Chair of Structural Mechanics and Monitoring on the onboard monitoring of railway bridges from vibration data from in-service trains. So as I told you in this presentation, I will mostly talk about uh, my past research during my PhD on the vehicle bridge interaction or in short VBI problem, which I examined mainly from two viewpoints, an analytical and a numerical viewpoint. So before going into details, I will give you like a brief introduction on why do we study this vehicle bridge interaction problem. So recently, uh, railway lines and uh, especially high-speed railway lines have expanded worldwide with China currently possessing the world's longest high-speed railway network, which exceeds 40,000 kilometers per hour. At the same time, the ratio of bridges in HSR lines is higher than ever, and in some cases it exceeds 90% of the total length of uh, high-speed railway lines. Also, the speeds at which trains operate are very high, and in most cases they are about or above 300 kilometers per hour. So this high uh, ratio of bridges in high-speed railway lines, in conjunction with the very high speeds in which trains operate, uh, motivated a proliferating research field on the vehicle bridge interaction phenomenon. In order to study this phenomenon, we uh, most studies started by a very simple model, a model that considers a load that traverses a beam, a simply supported beam. And based on this simple but uh, rather illustrative uh, model, uh, these researchers managed to derive some very important uh, conclusions. One like of the very important parameters that was suggested was this speed parameter here, which is the driving frequency of the load over the frequency of the bridge, and uh, has been associated with uh, resonance and cancellation phenomena uh, related to the VBI phenomenon. Then other important conclusions were derived that has to do with the effect of the mass and frequency ratios on the bridge frequencies and modes, uh, have to do with the damping effect that the vehicle has on the response of the bridge, and also with the um, uh, amplification effect of roughness on the vehicle and bridge response. So this research all in all showed that the vehicle-bridge interaction has a rather strong effect on the um, mechanical system and uh, the response uh, of, uh, of the bridge. To this end, some design standards attempted to take into account this uh, uh, dynamic effect of VBI on the response of the bridge. However, solving for the coupled vehicle bridge system, method, vehicle bridge system is not always easy, as it um, requires uh, deep knowledge on both vehicle and bridge dynamics. Therefore, they, they uh, suggested some impact factors that can give us a dynamic response of bridges based on a static response. They also con considered some um, formulas to take into account the additional damping effect that the vehicle bridge interaction phenomenon has on the response of the bridge. This formula here is from the Eurocode. And also some formulas to take into account the amplification effect of the roughness to the bridge response. However, these formulas have mostly resulted from numerical regressions. And uh, as later research showed, they can all, always capture adequately the effects of VBI on the response of the bridge. So for us, that was a very good starting point in order to um, examine the effect of VBI from uh, a more analytical point of view and try to capture the effects of VBI and also quantify them in a way. Therefore, we started from a very simple vehicle bridge configuration. It's very simple because it consists of, of uh, only a single degree of freedom vehicle here, which is considered with a vertical degree of freedom, and a simply supported beam that is considered with its first mode. 
Those here are the equation of motion of the vehicle and the bridge, which are solely the um, some differential equations. This lambda term here is nothing more than the contact force between the two systems. It's highlighted here with, uh, with a blue font and it's gonna be highlighted with a blue font for the rest of the presentation. In order to estimate this contact force, we estimated the very, we considered the very simple contact model. This contact model considers that we have a stiffness and a dubbing at contact, which is multiplied respectively with the contact displacement and the contact velocity. So in this way, we have a system of three equations, the equation of motion of the vehicle and bridge and uh, the contact force, which fully describes this simple system here. Up to this point, this is something known. It's something that uh, is, exists in uh, literature, and it's one of the simplest models that we can find to um, describe the vehicle bridge interaction phenomenon. So what we did from this point on is to try to identify what are the parameters that mainly affect this coupling between vehicles and bridges. Therefore, we expressed these three equations in dimensionless terms. This way, we managed to identify into the expression of contact force, what are the parameters mm -hmm. that mainly affect the coupling between vehicles and bridges. So we found the stiffness ratio, which is well known in literature as a coupling parameter between vehicles and bridges. And also another parameter, which is not that well known, which is the impedance ratio, which is nothing more than the damping at contact over the mechanical impedance of the bridge. The mechanical impedance is uh, essentially the um, resistance of the bridge to vibrations because of its mass. So in this way, we managed to find what are the main parameters that affect the coupling between vehicles and bridges. Then we focused on the bridge system and uh, what we aim to do is to find what are the effects of VBI on the bridge system, on the bridge mechanical system. Therefore, we substituted this contact force into the equation of motion of the bridge. And this is the expression that we derived here. These uh, blue terms are in reality the coupling terms again. These coupling terms constitute an additional damping term, an additional stiffness term, and a modified loading term. These three terms constitute the mechanisms of VBI on the mechanical system of the bridge. And they show exactly some, quant some quantities that can directly represent these mechanisms. These quantities uh, depend on the impedance ratio and on the stiffness ratio. And the in the modified loading term, we have the um, contribution of the roughness of the bridge and of the response of the vehicle. Then we focused on the additional damping term. And the reason why we did that is because as we saw in the introduction, Eurocode already suggests a formula to capture this additional damping effect. So this formula here that only depends on the impedance ratio, as you can see, it only obtains positive values, which means that it mitigates the bridge response. And it's time variant. This time variant formulation is not very convenient when we want to do bridge design, for example. Therefore, we aim to derive a time invariant formula uh, of the additional damping ratio. So we equated the energy dissipated per cycle with the strain energy and uh, with some other, um, uh, uh, some other assumptions here, we derived this formula to express the additional damping effect of VBI on bridges and specifically on bridges that can be described by single degree of freedom representations. So this formula, it can be used for simply supported bridges that can be described with single degree of freedom systems. We plotted this formula here. And as you can see, this formula that depends on the impedance ratio, and here is the distance between the wheels of the vehicle, the additional uh, damping increases with higher impedance ratio and with a higher number of wheels in contact with the bridge. This is a bit different compared to the formula that uh, Eurocode suggests that shows uh, that uh, the additional damping only depends on the length of the bridge, attains maximum values for bridges close to 15 meters, while for bridges longer than 30 meters, this is almost zero. As you can see here in this plot, for higher bridge length, the additional damping ratio appears to increase. You can also see that in this example here, where we have a simply supported bridge, 
and we have plotted the response uh, from the complete coupled system, which means that we solve the entire vehicle bridge system. The additional damping approach, which just considers an additional damping into the equation of motion of solely the bridge. And the moving load approximation, where the moving load approximation is a moving load model that I presented you in the beginning. It just considers a moving load on the bridge. As you can see, this additional damping approach can uh, very well estimate the response of uh, the bridge is in very good agreement with the coupled system solution. Whereas in the, the moving load approximation considerably overestimates the bridge response. What you need to note here is that the moving load approximation, in this case, it also represents the additional damping method of Eurocode, because the additional damping method of Eurocode suggests uh, that for bridges larger than 30 meters, the damping ratio is zero. This bridge is 36 meters, so according to the Eurocode, the damping should be zero, so the solution coincides with the moving load approximation. This clearly shows that indeed the current design standards can't adequately uh, estimate the additional damping uh, effect of BBI. So moving forward to this topic, we go to another part of the analytical examination of BBI that has to do with the decoupling of BBI, which is in reality uh, our, um, where our aim was to decouple the response of the bridge from that of the vehicle. So we go back to the same configuration that we used before, a single degree of freedom bridge with a constituent mechanism because of VBI. In order to decouple the system, we first need to identify where the coupling is coming from. As you can see here, the coupling appears in the modified loading term where we have the response of the vehicle. So in order to decouple the system, we need to find a way to eliminate those terms. As a first approach, what we did is to make some reasonable assumptions. This assu the first assumption has to do with the dimensionless response of the vehicle, which is of order of magnitude 10 to the minus 4. And the second assumption has to do with the stiffness ratio between the vehicle and the bridge, excuse me, that is of order of magnitude 10 to the minus 2. These assumptions were made according to data for, uh, via for trains and bridges of the European Rail Research Institute, which you can see plotted here, where as you can see, indeed the stiffness ratio typically is in this small area here, which is of order of magnitude 10 to the minus two. Of course, this is also a limiting assumption. So based on those two assumptions, we mm. applied an order of magnitude analysis. In other words, we estimated what the order of magnitudes of different terms are relative to each other. And we managed to eliminate the coupling terms here and some other terms that are associated with a stiffness ratio, which is considered small. Here you can see the simplified form where we have the impedance ratio. It's exactly the same as before. We have the stiffness ratio where we only miss a parameter that has to do with the stiffness ratio, which is considered small. And here we have the modified loading term where, as you can see, we have only the contribution of the self weight of the vehicle and the contribution from the roughness. We don't have any more the vehicle response. So this expression here is decoupled. This uh, uh, methodology here, we call it the modified bridge system method and is applicable to systems that can be described by a single degree of freedom system of the bridge as the methodology has derived from such a system. So this methodology is applicable to simply supported bridges. Of course, if we back substitute the response of the bridge into the equation of motion of the vehicle, we can also estimate the vehicle response. So here I have some uh, results, some parametric analysis for different speed parameters here, SV, of uh, simply supported vehicle bridge systems. Here you can see the stiffness ratio and the impedance ratio. As you can see, the coupling system is with, uh, with a continuous uh, purple line, and our method is with the dotted black line. In most cases, we are very close to the coupling system solution, which shows that indeed we can, in a way, estimate the effect of BBI on uh, the mechanical system of the bridge, as opposed to the moving load method that solely uh, approximates the, the vehicle as moving loads on the bridge, rather overestimates the bridge response. 
However, here where the stiffness ratio starts becoming higher than our assumption, than 10 to the minus two assumption, we have some discrepancies compared to the coupled system solution. However, still we can get results which are closer to the moving load approximation, which is a very common way to decouple the vehicle bridge system. So then we move to multi-degree of freedom system. So we move from this simple configuration here that we used before to multi-degree of freedom vehicle, multi-degree of freedom bridge systems. This jump from one system to the other serves the purpose of uh, being able to identify the coupling effects of VBI also for more complicated bridge systems. So the difference here is that we have a multi-degree of freedom vehicle of the bridge, of the vehicle, excuse me, and a multi-degree of freedom equation of the bridge. This is reflected by the mass uh, damping and stiffness matrices now. We have like matrix formulations. And the U vectors, which are uh, response vectors, both for vehicle and bridge. And here in lambda is the contact force vector, the vector that con consists of the contact force between the vehicle and the bridge. So this is the formulation, the multi-degree of freedom formulation of the equations of motion of the two systems, nothing more. Then in order to find what is this contact force, we apply a slightly different contact model. Our contact model is a rigid contact model that relies on the assumption that we have continuous contact between the wheel and the rail at all times. That uh, dictates that the gap function is always zero. So this gap function here, which includes the response of the vehicle and the bridge and the irregularities of uh, the rail system, is um, expressed on the acceleration level, which uh, the contact acceleration should also be zero. By substituting this contact acceleration into the equation of motion of the vehicle and bridge subsystems, we can derive the contact force. The contact force expression is more complicated in this case, but in reality, compared to the previous uh, representation, the, simple, the single degree of freedom representation, the only difference is uh, those terms here that emanate from the different contact model. These terms here are similar as before. So again, we have a system of three equations, the equation of motion of the vehicle and bridge and contact force that fully describe this multi-degree of freedom vehicle bridge representation. So to proceed, we uh, applied exactly the, same, um, uh, exactly the same steps as before, meaning that we express these three equations in dimensionless terms, and then we substituted the contact force into the equation of motion of the bridge. In this way, we came up with these a bit scary equations. They seem a bit like involved, but in reality, it's quite similar to what we derived before. So we have the dimensionless multi-degree of freedom equation of motion of the bridge with three terms here highlighted in blue that uh, represent the additional damping term, the additional stiffness term, and the additional loading term because of VBI. These terms now, they are not scalars, but they are uh, matrices or vector in this case, because they include higher modes of the bridge. This highlighted with blue terms that you see here is, are the additional terms that come because of the mass participating in contact, or in other words, the different contact model that we have used. What this means is that the non-highlighted terms are exactly the terms that we derived before, for the single degree of freedom representations, which uh, infers that our single degree of freedom representation is in reality a special case of this more complicated model. So again, we aim to decouple the vehicle bridge system. To this end, we apply the more mathematical approach, which relies on an asymptotic expansion analysis of uh, the vehicle and bridge response based on a small parameter. I will skip all the intermediate mm -hmm. steps because they are rather, com rather confusing. And I will go directly to the results where I, once again, we derive an equation which is decoupled. It's independent of the response of the vehicle. The response of the vehicle, which before appeared here in the additional loading term, vanishes from this term here which only depends on the self-weight of the vehicle the, dictated by this FB term, 
and some terms of how to do with the roughness profile of the rays, which is here this RC term. This representation compared to the previous representation uh, considers higher modes of the bridge, so it can be applied to more involved bridge system. That's why compared to the previous method, it's called the extended modified bridge system method. And this is because it constitutes in reality an extension of the previous approach. This is reflected on our example here, where we have a continuous bridge, where as you can see, this extended modified bridge system method, which, okay, it's a bit hidden here, can accurately estimate the response of the bridge compared to the coupled system. What is evident here is that the modified bridge system method, which is shown here in with the orange line, it cannot capture the response of the bridge as it only considers one mode. On the other hand, the extended modified bridge system method shows also very good results when it comes to the acceleration of the bridge, which can be, for example, an important serviceability limit state. So with this example here, I will close the analytical part of my presentation and I will move to the numerical part. So what we mean by this numerical part, this numerical part has to do mostly with the numerical modeling of VBI, how we model the vehicle bridge interaction model uh, problem in order to proceed to time integration. So for those who are familiar with um, constrained mechanical uh, systems in, in general, uh, they know that there are like several ways to um, perform time integration or to numerically model the system, but two main categories are iterative and coupled algorithms. So what are the differences? Iterative algorithms solve the vehicle and bridge system separately. That means that uh, the vehicle system and the bridge subsystems have um, uh, their integrated separately in the time domain and uh, in order to make sure that we have convergence of the solution at each time step, we need to perform iterations. These methods typically they are computationally efficient, but they may come up with convergency problems when the compatibility condition is not met. On the other hand, coupled algorithms, they solve the gathered vehicle bridge systems, so in most cases they end up in accurate solutions. However, the system matrices are time dependent, so typically they increase the computational effort of the analysis. So what we try to do for the numerical modeling is to combine the, the advantages of iterative and coupled algorithms and uh, create a new algorithm. Our new algorithm is a partitioned algorithm that, is, that relies on localized Lagrange multipliers. So what is that supposed to mean? This means that we have, we introduce a set of auxiliary contact points here, which uh, manage to partition the vehicle and bridge system into two separate subsystems. This is an approach that uh, we borrowed from the field of uh, fluid dynamics in reality. It's commonly used there. And we use it here, aiming to decouple the vehicle and bridge system while doing the time integration. At the same time, through this auxiliary set of contact points, we ensure compatibility of the constraints at each time step. That means that we avoid iteration at each time step, as at, at every time step, we uh, always ensure the compatibility of the vehicle system with the auxiliary contact points and of the auxiliary contact points with the bridge. So more specifically, what we do is that we introduce two sets of Lagrange multipliers. A Lagrange multiplier for the vehicle and one for the bridge. As you can see, those Lagrange multipliers are different, which shows that our two systems are independent. Accordingly, we have two sets of kinematic constraints, a kinematic constraint expressed between the vehicle and the auxiliary contact points, and one between the points and the bridge. What connects the two Lagrange multipliers is the compatibility of the constraints, which is expressed through Newton's law. So we have here a system of five equations, the equations of motion of the vehicle and of the bridge, the kinematic constraints and the compatibility condition. On the first side, it shows that we didn't gain much, but if we take a closer look, we see that the vehicle and the bridge are independent. As you can see here, we don't have any coupling between the two subsystems, which can have some important advantages. This system here, it's a system of five equations that can be solved in, uh, in different ways. A way that we adopted uh, 
in reality solves the vehicle and bridge subsystems in parallel. So at every time step, we estimate the Lagrange multipliers and auxiliary contact point accelerations, which in reality is what uh, ensures the compatibility of, the, con of uh, the constraints at each time step. And then we substitute those into the equations of motion of the vehicle and the bridge. The equations of motion of the vehicle and the bridge, I say once again, they are decoupled so they can be solved in parallel, reducing the computational cost uh, of the analysis. And also another advantage compared to coupled algorithms is that these matrices here are constant during the time integration. So they don't have to be factorized at its time step. They are constant, they are only uh, defined once. So we save a lot of uh, computational time. This reflects here to an example that it is a parametric analysis for different speeds of a train, an eight vehicle train traversing an arch bridge. This arch bridge, it's a rather complicated model. It's, it has like 4,000 degrees of freedom, is, a, is indeed a computationally heavy analysis. As you can see, compared to iterative algorithms and to coupled algorithms, our localized Lagrange multipliers method managed to decrease the computational cost of the analysis by four to 10 times. But of course, the main perk of this method is not purely the computational efficiency has to do mostly that we manage to decouple the vehicle and bridge systems, which can have like some other important advantages. However, this method uh, still solves a system of differential algebraic equations. What are differential algebraic equations and why do they bother us? Differential algebraic equations are system of equations consisting of ordinary differential equations and algebraic equations. The ordinary differential equations are the equations of motion of the vehicle and the bridge, while the rest of them, the rest of the equations are algebraic equations. But why is that a problem? This is a problem because of these differential algebraic equations, depending on their index, they may lead to scaling problems or to numerical drifts and instabilities. Those are purely numerical problems have to do with the numerical solution of the system. Uh, this is a very common problem of differential algebraic equations. Therefore, several methods were proposed to um, tackle this problem that include numerically dissipative algorithms or stabilization techniques. However, these approaches in most cases, they are problem specific while, while they don't have a very firm theoretical basis. To this end, uh, the uh, professor Natsiavas and Dr. Paraskevopoulos from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki came up with a very nice approach of uh, expressing the equations of motion of the coupled system as purely second order ordinary differential equations. Uh, what they did is that they introduced dynamic Lagrange multipliers, which are position like variables, as you can see here, which also give rise to um, a representation of the constraint equations as also second order ODEs. So compared to the classic Lagrange multipliers method here is what we have is only ordinary differential equations as opposed to classic Lagrange multipliers method that they are typically solved as dies. So the advantage is that we have is that we have a very consistent representation of the system. And also we naturally avoid numerical drifts and instabilities associated with uh, differential algebraic equations. So as an extension of our partitioned uh, method, we applied this approach uh, to our localized Lagrange multipliers method. To do so, what we did is that we substituted the contact points with auxiliary contact bodies. These auxiliary contact bodies have now inertia properties, but how they have like this inertia properties, in reality, what we did is that we introduced an allocation coefficient to allocate the physical mass of the wheel between the wheel and the auxiliary contact body. This allocation coefficient should have values between zero and one so that the actual mass of the system is preserved. It's, so this is very important so that the dynamics are also preserved. So in this way, we express the equation of motion of the vehicle here with the aid of dynamic Lagrange multipliers so compared to the previous uh, expression, we have here position-like variables. And here we have also some parameters here that are some coefficient, mass, damping, and stiffness. 
that they, they, they derive by an invariant form of Newton's law of motion, which is actually the basis for the development of the entire formulation of the constrained mechanical systems via ODs. And we have the same for the bridge. Additionally, the contact bodies now have their own equation of motion. And this equation of motion includes the Lagrange multipliers of both vehicle and bridge, which ensures the compatibility of the problem at its time step. Lastly, we have the compatibility conditions here that compared to the previous purely algebraic equations, we have also differ ordinary differential equations. So we have a system of five equations, which are all equations of motion. Uh, so we don't need any stabilization in order to make sure that our approach is, um, is accurate. And also they can be solved in different ways, either in a parallel solution or sequential solution, depending on the problem and depending on the user. So a last part here in order to just demonstrate what we were talking about all this time, like this instability. Here with a blue line, you see a coupled algorithm expressed via differential algebraic equations, where you can see that it deviates from the unconstrained system solution. The unconstrained system solution is what we considered as benchmark here as the accurate solution. Whereas the dynamic partitioning method, which in reality is the, uh, the representation of the system with dynamic Lagrange multipliers is always accurate. And also here is the same problem where is, uh, we have the differential algebraic equation solution uh, stabilized via the Baumgartner stabilization method. And it's exactly what I was telling you in the beginning of this section that these stabilization approaches are problem dependent and user dependent. As you can see for different parameters of this approach, we may or may not have convergence to the true solution. So, and these parameters are not defined by the method. It's something that the user needs to define themselves. So this is the real advantage of our approach. We have an approach that converges to the accurate resolution naturally. So a summary of my background research on the analytical part, what we did is that we managed to to quantify the additional uh, mechanisms, the mechanism of VBI on the bridge system. So we derived quantifiable parameters for the additional damping, additional stiffness and loading term of the vehicle bridge interaction on the bridge system. What we also did is that we uh, derived an additional damping ratio formula, which can be applied to simply support bridges. And lastly, we, um, we developed a decoupling approach for simply supported bridges and an extension of that that applies to more complicated bridge systems. And for the numerical part of VBI, we developed an algorithm to partition the vehicle bridge interaction problem by introducing an interface of auxiliary contact points. And then in order to make sure that we always have compatibility and we deliberate for uh, numerical drifts and instabilities, we introduced dynamic Lagrange multipliers. These dynamic Lagrange multipliers helped us to, to formulate both equations of motion and constraint equations as second order ordinary differential equations, which give us a very nice representation of the system uh, that can be used uh, without, um, without having any instabilities associated with differential algebraic equations. So I will close this presentation with a very brief overview of what my research is going to be about at ETH Zurich. So my research is going to be on the onboard monitoring of railway bridges from vibration data of in-service trains. So the monitoring of railway bridges uh, and bridges in general typically relies on what we call the direct structural health monitoring. That in reality is just visual inspections of the bridges or direct assessment of uh, displacements and accelerations of a sensors network directly mounted on the bridge. Those approaches can give very, very good results and very good insight on what the state of a bridge is, but they suffer some, from some disadvantages that mainly have to do with the cost of the, of the installation 
and also the extensive coverage of infrastructure. What I mean is that for an entire railway network, we need to install different sensor networks in each bridge in order to take some, in order to take like a picture of the structural health of the bridge. In order to avoid this, uh, to, to tackle these limitations, recent, uh, recent studies have focused on indirect approaches that uh, rely on sensors on traversing vehicles that can give us like an insight on the, um, on the model parameters or uh, damage on the bridge. These approaches have shown some very promising results, have mostly been applied to highway bridges. And uh, one of the main, um, one of the main like problems of, of such approaches is the roughness effect that usually interferes in the identification task. So in my, uh, in, in, during my research, I will extend this approach, this specific indirect approach to railway bridges. So in order to extend this approach, first of all, we will have to, to take some, to derive some models that are more representative of train systems. We will also need to take into account the different loading uh, configurations compared to highway systems that have mostly uh, been uh, examined for the indirect monitoring of bridges. And also we will have to find a way to tackle the roughness effect because we expect that with higher speeds that are typically a case in, uh, in train systems, we expect to have like a higher uh, uh, effect of the roughness. So these three tasks more or less comprise what my project will be during my research, during my stay at ETH Zurich. So this is like a graphical abstract of my, of my research. And with that, I will close my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions or comments are more than welcome. Thank you very much.